Hey, what's going on guys? Jackson here. Welcome back to this week's video. So I made a machine learning algorithm in Python to predict college basketball scores. Let's see how it did. So if you've never used Python before, or you've never used machine learning, that's totally fine. This video is totally introductory. But essentially how it works is you take training data. So this is data that represents what you're trying to predict. You feed it into Python, and then it will give you a predictive score based on the data that you gave it. This is what's called supervised machine learning. Essentially, like I just said, is where you give it data that you already know to be true, you feed it, and then it will build relationships between the data to find correlations. So for this, I'm using two APIs. I'm using the Sports Reference API, which is a Python library that has a basketball for college already built in. And then I'm also using SK Learn, which is a machine learning API and program that encompasses machine learning in Python. Both of them are really easy to use for beginners. I am basing this off of a guide that already exists, so I only have to do some simple modifications to get them to actually compete head-to-heads -heads and teams. So uh, let's see how it did. So how this program works is I will iterate through all the teams in NCAA basketball. Then I will find the teams that are playing each other, separate those into their own variables, and then get the schedule associated with each team. Once I have this object, then instantiate I can use this to then gather data for each data set. This then returns an object from sports reference with all stats about the teams. We're talking things from away percentage, home court advantage, literally anything you can list. I'll have all the stats that this can pull up on the screen here, but you can see that the list is pretty extensive. If we tried to run this program as it is, it would take so long that it wouldn't be reasonable. So what I did is I had to make a variable called fields to drop. And what this is, is it will drop the fields from the database that we don't care about in order for time constraints. This program already takes around 10 to 15 minutes to run with these fields dropped, and when I tried to run it without dropping these fields, it, it never finished. It just kept running forever, and eventually, I don't know what would happen. Once we have both of the data frames from each team, we can then both feed these into the machine learning model, and it will develop an algorithm on how it thinks that these two teams should compete head-to-head. -head. I then simulated three games and then took the average of each of those three games to decide how their point value should be associated. Once all this data is crunched together and put into the model, it will then output an array of two variables. It will give you the home score and the away score. So without getting too technical, let's go through and look at the results. So the first game that I simulated was Delaware versus Hofstra. And I went into the algorithm and I put Delaware as the team one and Hofstra as team two and then ran it. The scoring algorithm predicted that Hofstra would win 67 to 60. And when we check the final score, we can see that while that wasn't the exact score, it was 75 to 61. So was it exact? No, but it was pretty close. The second game was Woodford at Tennessee State and Tennessee was the one seed and Wolford was a seven seed, but it predicted Wolford to upset East Tennessee State. Uh, it, it predicted 76 to 74, and the final score was Wolford at 58, East Tennessee winning with 72. So this was by far the worst one yet. Um, obviously, this isn't perfect. I built this in about you know, two days, so. The next game that I used to simulate was San Francisco at Gonzaga. It predicted Gonzaga to win 88 to 72. When we check the score on this one, Gonzaga won 81 to 77. So this one was pretty close too. It's usually around plus or minus five or six points. And this obviously, this machine model has some, a, there's definitely some ways for improvement, but this is basically just a proof of concept to see if it would be possible to predict these scores. And you can see going 66% on predictions is pretty good. I only simulated three games just because these took so long to run and there's so much data and so much math associated with these that I didn't really want to kill my computer doing so. Okay guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see content similar to this one. See you guys next time.